Ladies and gentlemen, let's um, let's proceed with a, uh, a nice series. I'm going to kick off about uh, writing SQL for you know, business intelligence, data science, uh, or maybe even for developers who have been using ORMs for a long time and don't necessarily have a lot of familiarity with writing raw SQL. Um, we're going to be using Postgres. I'm on a Mac here using PG Admin. Uh, in order to get started, uh, find your way to a Postgres tutorial, which is not my website but it does have a sample database we can use, which you know, generally reflects what you would find in the real world. Uh, it's a DVD rental store chain. And um, just download the, uh, the zip, unzip it. It'll be a tar file. Uh, if you're on a Mac, you can just hit, uh, go in where you downloaded it, unzip a uh, DVD rental.zip. That'll give you that D, the .tar file. And uh, from there, you can just log into PG Admin. Uh, go to your local database and, and hit restore and uh, navigate to that tar file and uh, with a little bit of luck and possibly some trial and error you'll be up and running. So the first thing we're going to look at is uh, table relationships and again this is not a total beginner course I will give good voiceover to uh, uh, you know the basics so to speak but um, Again, it, it kind of assumes you understand what a basic select statement is, but you know you may you may enjoy it if if you haven't done anything yet. You still may learn quite a bit. So we're just going to write a new query here, and um, let's do uh, select all from payment limit fifty f five kicks off the query. So we've got a payment ID and a customer ID. So you know for the most part here, this is just. Uh, uh, data for payments, literally. So you have an, every payment has an ID. That's the uh, the primary key for the table. Uh, but every payment is made by a customer. So this is going to be a, a foreign key relationship to the customer table, as you can see over here, customer table. Um, so not knowing anything about the customer here, uh, what if we wanted to get more information about them within this view? So this is what we can do. I'm going to use some kind of weird syntax, um, but let's just see how it goes. So um, we're going to do select star from payment P. P is just an alias. It, it means the same thing as payment. So it's just, you'll see. So let's just, here, P dot star from payment P. All right. And you'll see it was the same exact thing. But what if I wanted to get my customer data now? I'm just going to do a join. So when you're not, completely sure on what kind of join to use. There are three different types of joins. You have kind of like an inner join, left join, uh, well, right join doesn't make any sense. You could just really inner join, left join are, are the basic joins that you should know about. If you go through a lot of tutorials, they'll start talking about like outer joins and cross joins. But, you know, have I ever used those? Not really. Um, as long as you understand these two things, you'll be okay for the most part. So let's do from payment P, uh, left join on um, customers, or just customer. And what are we going to join on? So the customer, let's look at this table. The customer has a customer ID. This table also have, has a customer ID. So we're going to call it left join customer C on uh, P dot customer ID matches up with uh, C dot customer ID. And uh, just so again, this is a left join. Um, let's just do that for a second. Notice that nothing changed about the result. That's because while we did the join, let me just clean this up a little bit. Um, we did not add anything from the customer column. So let's get everything. So let's just do C dot star and let's see what happens. Great, okay, now you can see we have the, the columns from our payment table. And then we have all the columns from our customer table. Great. So for the most part, that's a, a left join. Now, let me explain to you the difference between a left join and inner join. Um, if I had some rows, you know, rows in payment, and I did not have a, a customer in, in my customer's table, um, an inner join, only returns rows that have matches in both tables. So it would, 
sometimes you get a little tripped up. If you're doing exploratory data analysis or you don't know how the, the database was created, use a left join on your first table. So you're always going to keep what's in this table irrespective of whether or not it found a relationship. So you could have a payment ID and a customer ID. If for whatever reason that customer ID is not in your customer table anymore because somebody screwed something up or you just didn't realize, you, you know, your engineers missed something or maybe you didn't migrate old data, whatever the case may be, um, you won't know about it. You'll just see rows that were returned <coughs> where the customer ID was in both places. So again, usually, uh, you know, you have strategies for managing the integrity of the tables. Like you can't add one row um, to the payment table uh, if that customer ID doesn't exist in the customer table. But um, again, this is looking at B, you know, SQL from a BI standpoint, not from a database management standpoint. So that's my little um, little talk about left joins versus inner joins. If you did want to use an inner join, you can just do this. Probably won't change anything. We have 14,596 rows. We can just kick it off. We'll see how many rows we get back. 14,596. So in this case, they've kind of maintained good referential integrity. Uh, it doesn't really matter what we use for now. I'm always just going to use a left join because I think it's more, more clear and more obvious. Um, and just to cover what this is, this is kind of like when you want to select everything from multiple tables, you just do p dot star c dot star. Um, if you wanted to, uh, you know, you you could do whatever you want here. You could just add, add more columns. Uh, so let, let's just leave it at that for now. And um, let, you know, let's actually see if there's anything else we can join on. So we have payments, customers, staff, rental ID. What is a rental ID? Let's think about it. Any table called rentals? No, oh, rental. Oh, there's a table called rental ID. Let's look at it for a second. Just open up a new query window. All right, so we have a rental ID, we have the date, inventory ID. Okay, so this is just a table of, um, of items, and it's going to get us closer to kind of starting to understand what video was rented. So, um, yeah, let's actually uh, join this up real quick, rental ID. So. Let's uh, command D, or command shift D, no, control D. There we go. Control D will copy it down. So we're going to left join uh, rental R. And what are we going to join it on? We're going to join it on um, rental ID is coming from what table? It's coming from payment. Uh, P dot rental ID equals R dot rental ID and again it's right here see my mouse um, let's just make sure it works so we before we had 14,596 rows always watch the row number that comes back when you're doing this stuff that's how you'll know whether you jack something up or you restricted it so we got the same number of rows again we don't have any new columns because we didn't add the columns up here yet so let's just let's just do it real quick we're calling it R so we'll just do R star and uh, hit F5 we should get a lot more columns now and then we'll take a break and, and start thinking about what kind of questions we want to answer. Yeah, great. So, all right. So just to conclude here, uh, we started with payment. We joined the customer table onto the payment table. And we also joined uh, the rental column onto the rental table. We're creating a path where we can start uh, joining lots of tables and start looking at, looking at trends for this fake uh, DVD store. So we'll stop there. Uh, think about that. Re remember what I said about left joins versus inner joins, always watching the number of rows that actually get returned. And uh, we'll come back soon and start talking about some uh, some cool topics.